Yes. Why don't we have baptized? Why what? Why don't we have baptized? I think this is yours. I think. Okay. Like we have all these hours. Why can't we put it in that? Everybody's napping during class anyway, so. Oh, except for me, I'm trying to stay awake by force. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Okay. 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 You probably want to hire me for a second year, or uh, you want to? <laughs> I'll start doing it. Okay. Then we'll Wait, see how it works. Do we get okay. Okay. We'll get there. Everybody have a copy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we are now going to do Yontif Akhisidis. So this is this is a month. That has more Yom Tovim in it than any other month. Tishrei. Tishrei. And in fact, we can say that the majority of the days of the month are really Yom Tov days. The first day and the second day is Rosh Hashanah. The next seven days are Seret Mechuba. Then comes Yom Kippur. Then there are four days of a break. Then there are nine days of Sukkot, Shemini Atzeres, and Torah. So the majority of the month, days of the month, they're all Yantam. And what we do in this class is the same as throughout the year, when it comes to Hanukkah, when it comes to Purim, when it comes to Pesach, when it comes to Shavuos, is to go into understanding what is it, according to Chassidus, from a Hasidic perspective, what's really the essence of the Yantam. That was quick. Yes. Um, <laughs> are, there, are there any meals that are actually like the normal Rakhagim or are they all? Uh, That's not a question that belongs in this class. Uh, we'll have to leave it for later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, when it comes to the meals, yeah. when it comes to the meals, we don't approach it with the spirit. We actually eat the physical meals, not just spiritually but anyway, we're talking about the spiritual so perspective of spiritual meals with like let's say you or one of the other teachers let's we'll get there when a different time not now it's not the class for it so i don't want to do that um so first of all the general this is something which you might you probably heard already last year but this is something which we always need to repeat and reiterate what is the general difference between the way we view a yontiv from a Hasidic perspective and the way it's viewed from the general perspective when you just study Torah in general? So the answer to that question is based on the Pasuk in Megillah's test yesterday. Oh, I'm going to guess. Um, like, Yom Tov Hasidic talking about how whatever happened in the past, the same revelation happened like year after year. So it's not like, oh, this this happened thousands of years ago, but obviously said this is, it happened then, but it happens every single year at this time. Right, right. So that's exactly the point, that without Hasidus, we're celebrating something that happened in the past, has an impact on us now, we can learn from it now, we're affected by it, but it happened then. When you study Hasidus, we actually realize that there's something happening now when that date comes around, but it's happening in the spiritual realm. Naturally, it affects us also, but it's happening in the spiritual realm. And the source for this is the teachings of the Arizal, and it's based on the Pasuk in Shir Shir. Look at page five. That's, we have um, the Pasuk in, not Shir Shir, Megillas Esther, where it says, Hayomim Ho'elu, these days, this is talking about the miracle of Purim. Niskarim v'nasim. In Hebrew, niskarim means they'll be remembered. 
The Nasim, in English they translate celebrated, but Nasim is from the word Asiya. That will be happening. done, will be happening in every generation. So the simple meaning again means when it comes to Purim, we have to commemorate it by remembering and by action. Remembering is reading the story of Megillah Sester, and action is sending Shalach Manas, having a meal for Purim, uh, uh, acting in a way of Simcha, that's action. But according to Arizal, he explains it this way. He reads it like this, and these days will be remembered properly, the Nasim, then they'll actually be reoccurring once again. Yeah. Page five. Now, this is the Pasuk in, in, in Megillus Esther. You see it underlined? Right. And it means that this will be, those days are sort of reoccurring, but they reoccur in a spiritual way, because when it happened the first time, it also happened in the spiritual realm. And from the spiritual realm, it, met a, uh, it, it, it manifested here physically. So what happened the first time spiritually is happening every year on that date. The only difference is then it manifested down here, the sea split, or Haman was hung, or any other miracle. And now we don't see the physical manifestation, but spiritually it's happening and it affects us spiritually. So every Yantif in Hasidus, Kabbalah, what they go into is so what is happening spiritually and how does it affect us? How could we benefit from it and so on? So let's go to the, in this booklet, let's go to page. Okay, this booklet is mainly about the month of Elul. The next booklet will be about Rosh Hashanah. The next booklet will be about Yom Kippur. And the next book will be about Sukkot. So we know we don't have that much time, but we'll try as much as we can to squeeze it all in. What? What page? So here we're going to turn to page, no number. It's, it's, a, it's right in the beginning. And um, has ten points on the page. Third page. These ten points are all about what is unique about Elo and and then these are the day to leave, which you hear this in every class, and you heard it last year. But here we'll elaborate a little bit more on it. So. And again, some of you might have heard some of this in the class in Pesach, but this is now the time to do it over again. First of all, Tishrei is considered the beginning of the year. It's called New Year. And, and, and that's why we have this big commotion about it. Nisan is also the beginning of the year. So you remember, what is the difference between Nisan and Tishrei in terms of uh, they're both the beginnings of the year? So the answer is Tishrei is the beginning of the year. Nisan is just the beginning of the months. It's the first month of all the months. So that's based on a Pusik. What's going on? We don't have any page numbers. Oh, they're all in the corner of the page. No, they're not. Okay, it's page six based on, look at page six, right after number five. This is the Pusik about Nisan. It says, this month, is Reish Chadashim is the head of all the months and is the first of all the months. So that means in the Chumash and also in Tanakh, whenever you see a month mentioned by number, there are no names of the months. So you just want to know the, the history behind it. When did the months get names? Cheshven, Kislev, other. When? After they left Babylon, when they went back to Israel, in Babylon, that's where it was established. And when they went back to Israel, these are the names they brought with them. Why, why, did it have, um, why? why it happened then, I don't know. But I do know that in the Chumash and in Tanakh, because there are no names, the way to identify a month is by a number. So it's number 10, number 5, number 4. But how do you, how do you count it? The first of the months is Nisan. That's what it means. So we see that both of these days are considered beginnings. What about double other? Double other makes no difference. It just means 
Yeah, that would be the third thing. So one of the ways of explaining it is number two on the list, where it says Tishrei Rosh Hashanah for the natural order. And should be a mistake, it should be saying Nisan Rosh Hashanah for the miracles. In other words, Rosh Hashanah means the beginning of the year. This is the day that everything gets set for the entire year. So being that Hashem runs this world in two ways, one way is through performing miracles, the other way is the natural order, sun, the moon, the constellations, everything that happens naturally. So that's the difference. On Rosh Hashanah, Hashem determines everything that's going to happen naturally throughout the year. On the first day of Nisan, that's when Hashem determines uh, all the miracles that are going to happen throughout the year. So they're both beginnings, but one is for miracles and one is for nature. So that's one point of, that is a deeper understanding of the difference between the two months. In the English, it doesn't say Nisan, it just says Rosh Hashanah for miracles. It should say Nisan. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just so it should be easy to follow, let's jump for a moment to So number six, Tishrei is speech, Nisan is thought. What does that mean? One of the interpretations of the difference between Nisan and Tishrei is that just like a person, when we do something, first you thought about it, and then you go ahead and do it. First you think about it, and then you speak. Hashem spoke and created the world, but before that, he thought about creating the world. So the thought of creating the world, that began a Nisan. The actual creation through verbally pronouncing, let there be heaven and earth, that happened in Tishri. Yeah. So, how did Hashem think about this in Nisan when there weren't in the world, so there wasn't time? That's a good question. A good question. There was no time, but apparently, once Hashem began to think about creating a world, so I guess the concept of time began to sort of be mold, you know, began to develop. Okay. Um, because of the thought of speech and the thought of the like more like the nisim and the more like kava, would nisim and tishrei also the four worlds would it be more like um, like Silas and Sira? Like are the four worlds connected to Adam at all? I didn't find any way the four worlds are connected specifically to one or to the other. What we're going to understand is that the difference between the two will turn out to be of how Hashem relates to us is one, two different ways. One of them is related to Tishrei, one is related to Nisan. Nisan is the beginning for one a type of relationship and Tishrei is the beginning of another. Right, right, that's what we're getting to. Again, let's look at another difference, which is number seven. Tishrei is the beginning of the winter, where the sun is not shining so brightly, it's actually colder. And Nisan is the beginning of the summer, spring and summer. And the sun shining represents Hashem, because there's a pasuk, Kishem Shemogin Avaya Lokim, that Hashem is compared to the sun. So that's another difference between the two. Another difference between the two is how it came about. How is it, what came about that Tishrei and especially Yom Kippur should be a time of atonement and tshuva? So the answer is that they didn't worship the Egel Azov, the golden calf, and then they did tshuva. The tshuva wasn't accepted and they continued to do tshuva and Moshe continued to daven for them. And then finally on Yom Kippur, Hashem forgave us. And after forgiving us, he gave us the luchos, the Torah, once again. So that means that Tishrei represents a time of tshuva. 
that Hashem took something away from us, Hashem was upset with us, and there was a distance, we did tshuva and we came together again. Nisan, Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. It wasn't something that we did that warranted Hashem to do that. This is something which Hashem did sort of on his own. We weren't actually on the level. Took us out of Mitzrayim, he gave us the Torah, it was without the avoda of tshuva. So that's another difference between Nisan and Tishrei. Tishrei is the Aveda for Bali tshuva, for people doing tshuva. And Nisan is more related to people that are tzaddikim. And even though it's different people, but really every person could relate to both of the two. So what is this all about? How does this all interconnect? You said before, Susul Tata. Let me just show it to you in the words. Here it's number nine, but let's look at the Pasuk inside. There are two Psukim in Shir Shir. One is on page. Yeah, actually, there are no page numbers there. I don't know why. Okay. Some have page numbers, some don't. Maybe they were newer copies and we forgot to put in the page number. Yeah, look at uh, where it says Shira Shirim. How can I describe it to you? Just turn a few pages. It's number 10, then goes 11, 12, then goes 13, 14. It would be 15 based on the numbers we have. Page number 15 and 16. So you see an interesting thing. And you have two psukim that say exactly the same thing. The only difference is the order. It's not to them. It says on top, Song of Songs, Shir Shir. Did you find it? No? Which yeah, page number do you have? You have page number 11, 12? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. OK, I think everybody has it. So there are two psukim. Both are underlined. They say exactly the same words. The only difference is the order. The first one says, li vanilai, as we know, Shir Hashirim is describing the love that Hashem has for us, the love we have for Him. So everything here is written in an affectionate way. Hashem, Daidi means my beloved. I am, He is to me, and I am to Him. And then the next passage on the, on the other page is exactly the same thing, just a different order. I am to my beloved and he is to me. So this is the way Siddhis explains it. That just like the Gashmi, there's two people, one is on a mountain and one is at the bottom of the mountain. And the two people have to come together. There's basically two simple ways of this happening. One is that the one on top of the mountain comes down and now they're together. Or well, the one that's on the ground climbs up and now they're together. And the same thing is spiritually. The whole thing of serving Hashem is about us uniting with Hashem, becoming one. And how does that happen? So there's two possibilities. One possibility that Hashem takes the initiative and sort of extends himself to us. He allows us to feel his presence. He allows us to feel his love. And as a result of that, I get excited and I get motivated and I do everything I can to become closer to him. And there are times where Hashem holds back. There's nothing really coming from Hashem. Hashem waits for me to make that first move. And then when I make that move to do something, to get closer to him, as a result of my effort, Hashem responds by allowing me to feel his love and his closeness and we become united in that way. So that's the difference between Elul and Tishrei. The truth is every single person in their life could say that we have different times. There are certain times and certain situations which is and there's certain situation which So for example, if a person has a miracle that happened in their life. They were traveling somewhere and literally a miracle. They, they walked out of a building 
or they walked into some place, and just before or after they walked in, there was a bomb went off and the life was saved. A miracle. What do they feel? They feel Hashem is watching over me. Very often we find people like that, they become more connected. People like that become balichub as a result because they really feel Hashem's presence. So that's the situation where Hashem reaches out to us. And then there are times where there's nothing really happening, nothing really going on. It's just that I'm thinking about myself and my relationship with Hashem. And I realize I have to become closer and I make an effort. So basically, that's the other thing. In terms of the year, there are two times in the year and they are designated for these Avedah. Tishrei is Ani L'deidi V'deidi Elul is Aleph Lamed Vav Lamed, Ani L'deidi V'deidi Li, which means everything that goes on in this month is more about me reaching out to Hashem. Nisan, which happened in a way which we saw miracles upon miracles, and we weren't really worthy. And Hashem just reached out to us and took us out of Mitzrayim and gave us the Torah. So that's where Hashem revealed himself to us. And as a result of that, we connected to him. So these are the two times of the year. And naturally, now that we are in this month, we should be focusing on the advantages of this Avedo. There's an advantage in both. Maybe someone would like to suggest what's the advantage in each one of them. Yeah. For Tishrei, you could feel more like your own, like driven to do Tishrei. You're working on yourself more. You're having more fun. You're getting more stuff. You feel like not that you earn it, but you're like really putting in the work, and that's like very fulfilling feeling. Whereas in Nissan, or when Hashem is just like reveals Himself with like big acts, it's miraculous, like. That's very also like inspiring, but it's in a different way. It's less coming from you, though. But when it comes from him, it's like you feel very like special and also like taken away, taken aback by his like awesome. So what is one of the differences if it's coming from me or not coming from me? It's coming from you. It's like more long lasting. Okay, you're, you're in, work in the right tack. And why is it more long lasting? Because you're the, you're the one. It's you're taking the initiative. Coming from you. So I want to add one more word. When it's coming from me, it's deeper. It's like studying for a test yourself or someone giving you all the answers. <laughs> it's easier if someone gives you all the answers. But you're not going to remember the material pretty quickly. You'll forget it all. If you study and you read and you make an effort to remember it because you worked on it, it becomes part of you and it'll stay with you. Anything that comes through avoida, through effort, is something that has more, it's more, it's, it's, it means I invest more of myself into it and it's deeper. So we can surely say that when Hashem takes something from his side, we all want that. Hashem should just do something, a miracle. Let me see him. It's great. <laughs> it's much easier. It's yeah. amazing, but it doesn't have that depth. And when Hashem doesn't, then I have to make the effort until finally I can get there. The advantage is that it has depth to it. It's, it's mine, which means it's much coming from a much deeper place within me. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Which one was that? Wasn't about thought, speech, and action. Wasn't that nightmare? Well, if it was about, if it comes from you, then it's surely what we're talking about. This is the same same idea. This idea is like one of the threads throughout Chassidus, and that's, and that means these are the words that you have on the on this chart or list, whatever you want to call it. Number three, means it comes from down up. We are down here at the bottom of the mountain and we make that we go up and then Hashem comes down, or it starts the other way that Hashem comes down and then we go up. Then why is it rain? Rain comes from down or up to down. Oh, I'm gonna get there in a second. I'm gonna get there in a second. Yeah. Yeah. But what can we really do? 
What it means to do when it comes from us means to make an effort to be more deeper connected to Hashem, which is not just the giving the tzedakah, but that to change something internally by understanding the uh, the value of Torah, the value of mitzvah, having more of a feeling of love and excitement. Try to work on changing something internally. That, that what it means is coming from me. To learn more Torah in, in, with focus. Learning in more day. and understanding more the value, the greatness of Hashem, understanding more the greatness of Torah and mitzvahs, and then I'm more excited about it because the mind affects the heart. Yeah, Elo is about us coming closer to Hashem. By deep, yeah, everything we had in Torah, we had in mitzvahs, but with the intention that we're doing this to be more connected to Him. Not we're adding in Torah mitzvahs, so I'll get a better score on the judgment, you know, on the scale. It's more about connecting to Hashem. Yeah. Why did I write rain and do? Because during Tishrei, we daven for rain. During Nisan, we daven for do. How is that your space? What? And the difference between rain and dew, the Gemara says, it's true rain comes from up down, but how does the rain take place? There's water down here, the lakes that evaporate, goes up, and that's why in places like a desert, there is no rain. And it's a Pasuk and Chumash, in the beginning of the Chumash it says, and there's gonna be a mist that comes up from the earth, that forms the uh, water in the clouds, and then the rain comes down. So it's first momata comes from down up, then from up down. Do, the Gemara says, is something which just comes from Hashem. In fact, if there's no rain, there's a lot of things we need to do because sometimes there's no rain. Do is something which is always there. I mean, not in Brooklyn, but in places like outside of Brooklyn. In fields and with this grass and green trees. Maybe. Start powder. You got some Okay. Okay. Rabbi? Yeah. Um, we're always learning about how the more you're learning and doing this way, you're connected to that and everything, but how you need to be doing it for the right reason. And you can't just like learn Torah to be a big, you know, you need to be doing it to, for the right reason. But how do you know that you're doing it for the right reason? <laughs> First of all, I want to correct you. It's, it's not that you, that you must do it, meaning to say, on the contrary, there's a quote in Gemara, a person should first learn Torah, which means for any ulterior motive, and then eventually you'll get, in other words, it's impossible to start learning Torah for pure reasons that, you know, just all about Hashem. I'm a human being, I have personal interests, either I feel that I enjoy this, either I feel it makes my life happier, or I feel that I won't have any punishment. There's something personal that's motivating me because that's who I am. I'm a human being. Eventually, the more I get to appreciate Hashem and Torah and mitzvahs, I can develop a deeper kind of a, of a learning. How do I know exactly where I am? In other words, there's no red lights or green lights that shine. Oh, you got it. You hit number 22. So I guess we're not supposed to be measuring but one of the one of the ways i guess we can see with ourselves is how consistent we are with what we do in other words when you're really committed to something and really loyal to something in a deep way then when there's a little bit of a test a little bit of bump in the road i don't i don't lose it if my connection is mediocre then a little something happens i lose my commitment so sometimes that, that's one of the things that happened in a test. Uh, it says that the test is not so much for Hashem to know, sometimes for me to know where I'm holding. I always said, I never got a chance to really learn how to drive a car. If you give me a parking lot that's about 100 miles, nobody else is there, I wouldn't be afraid to drive. There's no people, there are no cars, there's nothing in the way, it's not a problem. Why? Because you don't have to have a problem when there's nothing blocking you. When there's something blocking you, then you have to know how to go here and how to go there and to make the right turns. 
So when do I know that my commitment and connection is real and true? Then when there are certain challenges and I'm able to, to, to deal with them in the right way, overcome them. But the best thing is, and we'll soon learn about it, we shouldn't be thinking so much about what I did reach, what I didn't reach, just do what we have to do. What happens, happens. Here's another very interesting thing. And that is uh, number five. Tishrei, the reverse order of the Allah base, this is the correct order of the Allah base. Anyone know what that's alluding to? Yeah. That's something else. What? Order of Tefillah. Oh, the Chumash. So what, what does it mean, the reverse? So you're a little bit, almost there on the right track. Let me show you what this means. Let's turn the next page. Which page is it? Here we go again with the page numbers, okay. Uh, let's go to the page. Oh, this has a number, number seven, number eight. So number seven, number eight is just to show you that Tishrei, we pray for the Fidu and Nisan and Tishrei, we pray for rain. What? We do it in Musaf, right. On top of the page, it says Tfilas Tal, the prayer for do, that's Pesach. The next page says prayer for rain, that's Tishri. But look at the next page. There's an arrow there pointing to Keladon, a very famous song. We all sing it on Shabbos. Did you ever notice that every word is a letter of the Alabas? Then every letter, sorry. Every, every, um, Every um, phrase there. Kayla then I call him Asim Aleph. Baruch Hu Mevarech Beis. God leave it to the Gimel. Das is Luna Dali. Hamis Gaya Hey. Goes all the way down the whole Aleph Beis. Look at the next page. This is the davening that we say every day. Kayl Baruch Gedol Daya Heichen of Baal Zare Chama. You have the whole Aleph Beis in order. Aleph Beis Gimel Dal everything. Turn the page again. Ashrei is also the same thing. It starts with Aleph, and then you have Beis, Gimel, Dal. Every Pasuk begins with another letter of the Aleph in the order. Then there are other prayers that they have the Aleph but the reverse order. It goes backwards. Tov, Shin, Reish, Kuf, like the Aaron Shabbos. Tikanta Shabbos, look at that. Tov, Shin, Reish, Kuf, Tzaddik, but you have the whole olive base there, but backwards. <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> so, in the davening of Rosh Hashanah, especially if you pay attention to the Hebrew, you will see that a lot of the prayers, not a one, two, three, a lot, on the order of the Alabes, but some are Alabes Gimel and some are the backwards. What is the difference? The difference is what we're talking about now, that when the order is Alabes Gimel, it, it indicates a, a pattern of going from down up. Alab is the first letter, and you go all the way till the end, you're starting from uh, the top and you're going down to the last letter. Alab is the beginning especially if we think that Aleph is Hashem, and then it goes all the way down to Tuf, to the last letter. It's, it's referring to something that's related to that kind of pattern, going from higher down. When we find the reverse order, that's indicating that the issue at hand and the subject matter is something which is from down up. It's something which is working its way up from the bottom and working its way up. So where do we see that in reference to Nishan and Tishrei? 
So the word Tishrei is spelled Tav, Shin, Rej. You don't need the Halala base. Just the fact that it's these three letters in that order shows the order is from down up. What about Nisan? So to understand that, you have to turn to the next page. And this is page 13. And it says that the Yantan of Pesach must be in the spring. And that's in fact why we have two others. If we wouldn't have two others, it wouldn't always be in the spring. It's the page after number 12. I don't see the number on it, but it's right after number 12. Aviv is the Hebrew word for spring, and Aviv is spelled Aleph, Beis, Yud Beis, which means the order is Aleph Beis. So when it's the correct order of Aleph Beis, it's like up, down. Up, down. And when it's reversed, it's down, down. Right, so all the things we spoke about, if you think now, you see how they all fit into the same thing. What's the difference between miracles and nature? When things happen naturally, Hashem is concealed. And I have to make an effort to see that the money I earn today at work is from Hashem. The fact the sun is shining is from Hashem. It's raining is from Hashem. You know, this is own nature. What? That's Tishrei. And that's from down up. And Nisan is a time that Hashem created the world. Uh, that Hashem designates the miracles. The miracles is from down, from up down. Hashem shows us openly that he's here because a miracle can only happen from Hashem. It's beyond nature. Well, all right. That's Aviv. Aviv is Nisan. And Tishrei is from down up. Yeah. This also compares it to Elul and Adar, right? Elul and Adar, because both are the last months. And both. also they're like both preparing for Nisan and for Tishrei. That's they're, true. So is there also like comparison? Like, it doesn't seem like the vibes are very the same. Other is like dancing all the time, and Elul is. I mean, well, you bring up a good point. There should be that kind of a difference, but I must confess that I, I don't remember reading anywhere that they should draw that kind of parallel between other and L, even though it makes oh. sense. It should be. There must be something. I'll tell you the one place where I do find it is the 25th of other and the 25th of L. According to the opinion that the, the world, the, right, if the world was created in Tishrei, then when did it start? Six days earlier, 25th of Elul. If it was created in Nisan, when did it start? The 25th of Other. So certainly Other is the month that leads into Nisan, and Elul is the month that leads into Tishrei. But how do we draw a parallel between Elul and Other that I haven't seen? And if anyone can come up with something, find something on Google or on... Uh, <laughs> On Chabad.org, I'd be happy to hear about it. I'll go to the score for the uh, certificate. Okay. So the same is with the fact that we said that Nisan is in the summer when the sun is shining and the sun represents Hashem. Here's another page, page 14. Here's a passage. Nope, the wrong one. Sorry, wrong number. It must be earlier. Pasuk and Tillim, where no, it's... it's one yeah, okay. We're, I, didn't, I guess I didn't make a copy of that Pasuk. But well, Pasuk and Tillim, it says that Hashem is compared to a sun and to a... Uh, to a um, it protects us like a, like a mugging. Mugging means a um, shield, right? So all this, again, the difference is whether we are connecting to Hashem because Hashem is extending himself to us and then we respond, or we are extending ourselves to Hashem and then he responds. So in, in Hasidus, it's very much connected to the number 10 all the way at the bottom. There's a famous Gemara that the Gemara says, a person would appreciate one measure of grain that they worked on the field themselves, much more than nine measures of grain, but it belongs to a friend. 
So the way Hasidus explains it is same page, it's the, the bottom, the last thing on the list. It means that imagine you have something that you, I mean, let's say, take a piece of art. An artist draws a picture. And if this would, picture would sell out there, it would, they, would, they can get $100 for it. You have another piece of art that's worth, if they didn't draw it, someone else drew it, but it's worth $300. Which one would they be more ready to give away? The first or the second? No, which one would they be ready to part with the quicker? The other one, even though it's worth more than this one, because there's a sentimental value, I invested myself in this, it's mine. So the Gemara says, you have nine bushels of wheat that someone gave me. And I have one bushel of wheat that I worked hard to produce it. I feel more for that than the other nine. Spiritually, this is the way it's interpreted in Chassidus, is that if you work on your own, imagine you have a miracle. Which, which way do you see godliness in a more powerful uh, way, in a more spiritual way? When I work on my own or Hashem performs a miracle? Of course, when Hashem performs a miracle. It's like nine bushels. That's wow. That's huge. But it's not me. It's Hashem carrying me and lifting me. It's like a wind blowing, blowing me in the wind. But when I do it on my own, it's much less, but it's me and it's deep inside me. And that part is more precious than anything else. Because the whole purpose of creation that we should do the other thing. Don't forget, Hashem could have created the world and then changed everything and made everything beautiful. Mission accomplished. So what are we working so hard for for 5,782 years? The whole point of creation is that all the good in the world should come through human effort, through our Avedah. So that's the most precious thing to Hashem is our Avedah. Which means in some way, if you have one person who is born a genius and born with the nature that he loves to learn, loves to do mitzvahs and loves everything, he has no challenges, no Yitzhara for some reason or other. And he does great things. And you have another person who has challenges and yet they overcome the challenge and they accomplish like a little drop compared to the other person. In some ways, this person is more precious to Hashem because what they've done is really their avod. The other person is more, well, Hashem created them with the head, with the heart, with the eyes, with talent, with all those things. So it's not him. It's like angels compared to humans. So this is what this month is all about. But there's one huge question. I expect everyone to ask the question. It's not happening yet. So I'll ask the question. After everything we said, that Chedesh Shell is all about coming from me, what is the Mashal of Melav Asada all about? King is coming to the field. <laughs> That's the twist. opposite. But it's a twist. But it's a twist. The yeah. Isn't it like you saw to go out to the first Right. Right. right, and also how not everyone goes to meet him. Like, meet him, like he's more available. But hey, he's right, he's available. But if you don't go and meet him, then he's just going to be sitting there. Right. So the rabbi has this question. That's the answer the rabbi gives. The king comes in the field. What the, that is means he's now enabling you to do your avoda, but you have to do the avoda. When there's a miracle, let's say that's not enabling. That's actually carrying me, lifting me, inspiring me. Over here, the king's in the field, which means he's giving you the opportunity. It's like you give somebody a car, but they have to get into the car and travel to the place they need to go. Without the car, I don't have the opportunity. Now I have the opportunity. But if I don't get into the car and drive, I'm not going to get to this place I need to get to. Yeah. When it says that the king is in the field and he'll greet everyone with a smiling countenance, so the second part, I know that the rabbi asked a question about the second part of what it meant. And I was I was reading about it, but I'm so confused. Like, what does it mean? What does the second part of that phrase mean when he's going to greet everyone with a smiling countenance? First of all, if you think of it in a very real way, when a king is in his palace, it, it's very, it's it, 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 it's very awesome, intimidating. intimidating when you walk in, like the king guards the whole, the whole setting. 
when the king is in the field, the setting is so much more casual and the king is much more casual. I mean, my picture would be the difference between the rabbi giving out dollars or sitting by a fabrengen. Wow. Sitting by a fabrengen, there are thousands of people, you're one among the bunch. And the, the, the picture was, I mean, the image that you saw was awesome. One person, thousands of people looking at this person, listening to everywhere that comes out of his mouth. And you see that he's talking about things that are affecting the whole world. It's awesome. But the dollar is if you watch the videos, they're just talking, yeah. smiling, casual, men, women, children, waving to little children. I mean, it's a whole different, that's called Melok Basadu. So therefore, wow. Hashem, that's a, and therefore, if the, if the king is in that kind of mode, he's more likely to fulfill your request than any other time. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. In fact, if I'd have to imagine a king in a field, I don't know what a king looks like. <laughs> I hardly know what a field looks like. Maybe I'm born and bred in Brooklyn. You know? But this I can imagine. This I can picture and I can see it. And also, there's some basically how in, to get into the king's palace, there's only like a, a select few of the, you know, important people. But the field is like the common people. But isn't it true that if you approach a king while he's in the field, then you become one of the, um, I don't know the word, like, like regal, like if you approach him when he's more casual, then you become like a, That's the way in, right. right. That's how you get in. One more quote on this page, all the way at the bottom with this little star. Nama d'chsufa means bread of shame. This quote comes from the Zohar. And the Zohar says that we see human nature is when you get something that you didn't really work for, if someone gives you a gift, you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Imagine, especially if someone's not a gift, is sort of giving you, supporting you, giving you money, giving you food. You just don't feel comfortable. Why? Because human nature is you feel comfortable when you get something that you worked for. When you did a job and your boss gives you the, the check at the end of the week, nobody feels uncomfortable about that, unless you weren't really working. But if you're working and you get paid, that's normal. But when you get something as a gift or someone's giving you support, human nature is, it's, that's what it calls, is what it calls a bread of shame. So basically the, the true sense of satisfaction and content of getting something is when I work for it and I got it. So that's the, that's what the month of Ella represents, the Indian of Avoida. That's what, Basically, what I just said, all this is really the, the deeper meaning of Anila the, the concept of first I turn to Hashem, and then Hashem turns to me. Yeah. Is there a correlation between, like, in preparation for Rosh Hashanah for Tishrei, there's a lot of, like, Brooklyn's preparation, with, like, extra Tehillim and extra davening and extra everything. Whereas, like, the preparation for Nisan and for Pesach, I'm thinking, like, very gosh, like, and this and that, and obviously, you know, still learning and getting ready for Yemtif, but why is there such a difference in like, you know, you know what I mean? That's an interesting observation, no? Could you see a correlation? It's a good, a good point. If anything, I would have thought the opposite based on what we're saying. If Tisha is from down up, that should have been the time that has to do with cleaning, physical, you know, working hard. Okay, something to think about. So this was the, this covers this part. The next part is about the muscle, which I think you all know, so I'm not gonna go into that. I'm going to go to the next part, which is page, You know, there is something I want to mention over here. We all understand El, uh, Tishrei, Roshani, and Kippur. 
how can we start this time period from Rosh Chodesh Elul? What happened on Rosh Chodesh Elul? We know what happened on Rosh Hashanah. We know what happened on Yom Kippur. But what happened that's reoccurring on Rosh Chodesh Elul? Yeah. Right. It's a period of 40 days that Moshe was davening to Hashem. And that period started Rosh Chodesh Elul and it ended on Yom Kippur. So another cute thing is, look at the word Ani Lododu Vidodili. What's the last letter in Ani? Uh, 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 yud. The last letter in the Dodi? Yud, 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 yud. yud. How much is four times Yud? Wow. 40. 40. These are the 40 days that start Rosh Chodesh and the end on Yom Kippur. So these 40 days are called, and, and look at the page 17, they're called you may look at number six, seven, and eight. They have a name. It's called You May Rutzen, a day of goodwill. Ace Rutzen, a time of goodwill. Certain attributes of mercy are shining because that's what happened then. Moshe davened. And they, before he davened, it didn't help. He didn't want to forgive him. And now his davening brought about Hashem's certain attributes of mercy. So the whole month is a time of certain attributes of mercy. In, in, in certain Sephardic communities, they actually start slichas, which means they get up early in the morning every day from Rosh Chodesh El, like from five, six in the morning. That's when a lot of people like to stick to not swagger. <laughs> After that, they go back. But it's uh, it's because the whole month is really Yigim Moslav. It's really a question. Really, all of us should be doing that because of the whole month is 13 attributes of mercy we should do in the special tefillas the whole month. Okay, we'll stop here. And continue tomorrow in your session. Thank you. I saw somewhere a meme went through on how exactly it goes, but I think it was something you want. Best time to be Chabad is LL Christian. Worst time to be Chabad is Big Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Oh, <laughs> right. we can change according to the season. Every like first day of something, I don't, I don't manage. Something exciting, I can't sleep. Yeah. You're very welcome. Okay, see you tomorrow. Say awake and Okay, I can understand that. I think so. Yeah. Sorry, what am I saying? Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Always paper, just the first thing.